Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit. For those of you who are awaiting test results for COVID-19, you can now obtain your results online. Please check the Ministry of Health's online portal or the link on our website. Please note that at this time our Health Unit staff will continue to follow up with you directly to provide your results. Please remember that while you are awaiting results, you must remain in self-isolation. Overall, 5,679 individuals have been tested for COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex County, and of those tested, 916 tests are pending. I will now share the most current case counts. There are 46,895 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada, and 14,432 cases are in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 46 cases, and Sarnia-Lampton has reported 170 cases. Michigan now has 37,778 cases, with 8,613 cases being in Detroit. Today, we are reporting 569 cases of COVID-19 in our community, an increase of 12 cases from yesterday. 41% of our cases have occurred in long-term care and retirement homes, both in staff and residents. 139 cases have resolved, 24 people remain in hospital. 17% are between the ages of 50 and 59, and 23% of our cases are 80 years or, years or older. 39% are male, 60% are female, and 1% are unknown at this time. Our community has lost a total of 38 people to COVID. 27 deaths have occurred among residents in long-term care and retirement homes. Our health unit continues to work with five long-term care and retirement homes that are currently experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. Testing for COVID-19 is based on a clinical assessment. Symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, cough, difficulty breathing. However, other symptoms may be present, such as being extremely tired, falling, nausea, vomiting, chills, and headaches. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, there are several options. Complete the online self-assessment tool available at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone or virtual assessment. They will be able to guide you in next steps, including contacting public health or attending one of the two assessment centers. Windsor-Essex has two centers, one at Erie Shores Healthcare in Leamington and another assessment center is with Win Windsor Regional Hospital, Olet Campus. Please note that testing is available for people who have symptoms of COVID-19. Please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. As public health continue to lead the response to COVID-19 pandemic, we are seeing the flattening of the curve, not only in our region, but also across the province. Some of the challenges in the COVID-19 response highlighted the more systematic challenges to our healthcare system. One of the strengths, at least we noticed, is the local decision-making and the ability to take decision, uh, make, take action based on local needs. With our strong partnership with our local leadership, including municipal leadership, as well as the healthcare system, strong communication to get the message out to the public, and most importantly, the case and contact management for all COVID-19 cases, we prevented the surge. We preserved the healthcare system capacity to serve the needs of our community. As we are seeing a decline in the community cases, our focus is now shifting towards increasing the testing for our most vulnerable population living in various congregate settings. Individuals experiencing homelessness is one such group and is, increased and is at increased risk for COVID-19 due to a number of factors, including underlying medical conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, respiratory disease, substance use disorder, as they all increase the risk of acquiring an infectious disease. Ability to practice hygiene and access to facilities, people who are homeless are usually not able to wash their hands, 
regularly shower or launder their clothes or access proper bathroom facilities, which are all important for protection against the spread of infection. Also, these people without a home are limited in their ability to self-isolate themselves. They spend time in public settings, which are not subject to proper disinfecting and sanitizing, as well as because of physical limitation. Most shelters are not set up to provide the spa space needed for social distancing. The Windsor Essex County Health Unit under uh, Theresa Marentet, uh, our CEO, has provided guidance and training documents to inform shelters in preparation and responses to COVID-19, as well as the, the health inspectors from, our, our, from the health unit have responded to request for more on-site support and guidance, including delivering necessary personal protective equipment to these shelters. Over the past few weeks, the Windsor Essex County Health Unit has worked closely with the City of Windsor, the Windsor Essex Community Health Center, and the leaders of local emergency shelters to provide screening, medical assessment, and testing of individuals experiencing homelessness. Currently, shelter staff screen guests when entering the shelter and refer for a virtual medical assessment with the Windsor Essex Community Health Center nurse practitioner. A medical assessment is then necessary to assess symptoms for COVID-19 and testing as appropriate. If testing was needed, a public health nurse provide on-site testing support for these uh, individuals. With the additional support of EMS, Windsor Regional Hospital, Hotel Du Grace Healthcare, Erie Shores Healthcare, and local mental health and addiction providers, the Vichu and the City of Windsor plan to expand this model for the region's most vulnerable, offering testing for the entire shelter population, regardless of symptoms. Those details will be shared in the next few days. The Vichu expect this expanded plan to occur sometime next week, once appropriate housing and supports can be put in place. And one of the key recommendations from public health is to, is to protect yourself from COVID-19 and to stay home. For many, this is not an option, and that is why we are working with our most vulnerable population to provide all the care that they need to protect themselves and to limit the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Thank you. They go to a testing center and they usually have to convince the uh, professionals there that you know they need a test and that some of them have come back positive even though they may not have you know gotten a test based on the questionnaire online. So you know how how is it decided basically like who gets a test and who doesn't if not everybody's symptoms are the same? Um, so. As we are learning every day about the symptoms and what uh, these individuals who are tested positive are bringing back with the symptoms, uh, new symptoms lists are added to the list. And first, and uh, I think the most important part is the, the physician's assessment. So when people are going to the assessment center, they are assessed by a healthcare provider to make sure that they are not missing out on any other uh, possible diagnosis. Sometimes these symptoms can be very mild and uh, may be uh, non-specific uh, for uh, COVID-19, and there could be a possibility that they may, be, uh, they may not get tested. But most of the individuals, when they're going to the assessment center and after an assessment, they are tested and uh, we are getting the results back. And uh, as I said, we're continuing to learn every day about COVID-19, and as we are learning more and more, new lists are added to the, uh, to the symptoms and the testing protocol. Okay, so just a quick follow-up then. If somebody fills out that online questionnaire, um, and it's not just the health unit, the provincial government has one as well as the federal government, so people fill that out and it basically tells them you don't have symptoms, but they're still feeling unwell, would you encourage them to still go to an assessment center or to see a physician? Well, if you, uh, we, the, 
uh, working with the Essex County Medical Society, we did launch uh, uh, a virtual patient assessment portal, and I would suggest that maybe people should go there first and to get that assessment done and talk to a, a healthcare provider uh, in person um, through the virtual assessment. And then that would give them a better indication whether they should be going to the assessment center for swabbing or for testing or whether they should uh, they should stay home. So I would encourage going through that rather than just uh, rushing towards the assessment center in the first place. But if they do feel that they need to go, okay, they can you. go there. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions from Windsor? Over the past week or so, we've seen an increase in the number of pending uh, tests per day. Is that because of backlogs in the system or is that simply because we're testing more. Uh, we have been testing more individuals um, and more proactively in the long-term care homes and the retirement homes. And uh, that is one of the reasons that we are seeing some pending uh, increase in pending cases. And that is uh, across the board. And uh, our uh, labs, it go to London Lab. And uh, through from there, uh, they are receiving uh, lab samples from all the other uh, regions or all the other health units. And there's been some delay there uh, in processing those samples just because of the volume, but we are hoping that that would, uh, that would clear up soon. Any questions from CBC? Yes, good morning. Um, looking at the confirmed cases on the website, there's 146 unknown cases of like, basically what their status is. How is that possible? I'll have to check which specific number that are you referring to. Confirmed cases of COVID-19 by status. The very end where it says unknown, it's 146. Okay. What kind of cases are falling through the cracks that you are not able to determine exactly their status? Um, I think when we are talking about I uh, confirmed cases of resolved so there are resolved and then there are unknown. So there are unknowns mean that, that we are in the process of uh, ensuring that whether they are self-isolating at this point or they've completed their, their timeline or whether they have, uh, um, whether they're considered resolved at this stage or not. It's not that we are not aware of them. It's just the, the, when we are making that determination, whether they're resolved or in process or in self-isolation, I think those are the ones, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll We'll, we'll double check with our epidemiologist to make sure that that number is accurate because we do, we, we are working with every individual uh, and uh, ensuring that they are getting the advice and follow up that they need. So who's in charge of take, keeping track of this individual doctors or is this a particular uh, segment of the health unit that's supposed to be watching and taking so, care of this? So when we are talking about case and contact management, every positive case in the community, we, uh, um, we are following up with them and we are getting in touch with them uh, regularly to make sure that they are, their symptoms are stable, it's not work, uh, getting worse, and they are following the recommendations of public health. So all of these individuals are assigned uh, a case nurse and then they, they do follow up uh, with those individuals uh, every day. Uh, if not, then maybe every other day, depending on their symptoms and their severity of the symptoms. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the Windsor Star? Uh, yes, good morning. Have any other individuals been transferred to the uh, Windsor Regional Field site? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, and then uh, your focus has shift, so shifted uh, towards the, the homeless population. Are there any other populations that once that plan is in place, uh, the health unit will shift its focus to? Well, it's uh, it's. Uh I think there are multiple plans that are working right now. Our inspectors and our team are involved with the uh, mass testing of all the long-term care homes and ensuring that they get the support to prevent an outbreak from happening in the first place. And those facilities that are currently in outbreak, we are providing support to them to, to make sure that they come out of the outbreak as soon as possible. In addition, when we're talking about uh, congregate setting uh, with the uh, people living in shelters, we're also talking about some of the other uh, uh, group settings and uh, including migrant farms, including uh, uh, group houses, uh, group homes, and we are providing support to there, there as well. 
and I think that's uh, that way we are we we will be in a better position to uh, for a comprehensive community based testing and strategy to ensure that uh, we're not missing out any uh, high risk population uh, and uh, we are uh, providing uh, taking care of their needs as uh, in the community. Have any local facilities indicated that they would like the assistance of the armed forces? Um, at this point, uh, we haven't heard anything uh, from uh, any of the facilities at this uh, at this stage. And when we are looking at these facilities, uh, our team is working with them, and we are identifying their staffing needs and their PPE needs, their infection prevention and control needs. All those needs are uh, uh, reviewed every day, and if there is any concerns with these needs, it is uh, try uh, we try to. Uh, fulfill those needs with the local partnerships that we have, whether with the hospitals, whether with the um, with the Ontario health teams, and if not, then we are uh, we escalate it up to the to the regional discussion, and if needed, from there, it can be it can go all the way up to the premier's office and to maybe requesting uh, any of the support, but. That doesn't. That didn't happen yet in our community, and our homes are uh, doing okay with the current re re staffing, with the support of all the uh, hospitals and the Ontario Health teams uh, that are supporting us in our region. Thank you. Any questions from Blackbird? Uh, can you speak clearly? I am having a hard time hearing you. Um, is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, how often are residents in long-term care or staff in long-term care homes being tested? I know you've said in the past that you can test negative one day and positive the next. So as part of the strategy, how often do the staff and residents get tested? So when we are talking about these testing, so the a technique what we call in public health is we basically did a screening. And when we are saying screening, so that's a baseline screening that we have on all those individuals to get a better handle on who who is a case, who is not a case, whether they were symptomatic, whether they are not symptomatic. And then that was the baseline screen. If any of them after that baseline screening, any of them develop symptoms, that will be the trigger for us to do additional testing on those. It's not the plan that we will continue to test them after every certain number of days. Uh, I think that would be uh, not a good use of the resource that we have. Um, after the baseline, it, it is uh, my understanding that everyone will be tested based on their uh, symptoms. Okay, um, and unrelated question, if there's multiple employees at a grocery store that test positive, um, would it be a recommendation to close that store, or what would the approach be? And would that be something that the health unit would investigate? Uh, health unit investigate every case that happens in the community, and then uh, all the active con contact investigation is done. And uh, based on that contact investigation, uh, appropriate advice is given to all the individuals who are deemed as close contacts and are advised to self-isolate. And if uh, there is any concerns about uh, those workplaces or those facilities that uh, other individuals may have come in contact with or uh, may be deemed as close contact, uh, we try to reach out to them as well, um, and that's usually uh, how we do our case and contact management. But have you had to investigate any specific stores in the community, or have there been raised concerns? As I said, we do investigate each cases, and uh, we we work with the uh, with the cases to identify all the close contacts and everyone. And uh, I guess facility or not facility, it's uh, that issue comes in later as long as we have first identified the close contacts. If it's the employees that we are concerned about or if the other general public we are concerned about and based on that uh, uh, investigation, appropriate action is taken, including uh, maybe uh, m issuing a public release or something to, to suggest uh, um, anyone who visited that facility to, to look out for their symptoms or monitoring their symptoms or, or any such things. But uh, so far, we haven't uh, done that yet here in our community. Any questions from CTV? 
Yeah, I heard you on the radio this morning. I made hundred talking about uh, the potential opening of businesses. Is it is it too early to be talking about that yet, or is it the right time because you were talking about flattening the curve? Well, I, I think there is uh, definitely uh, uh, um, a desire for many individuals, especially from the business community, to get the economy going. There are a lot of people who are sitting at home and uh, f experiencing different kind of challenges. And uh, we're trying to balance that risk with the public health risk that we can anticipate when we go back uh, and open all these facilities up. So far, with all the strong public health measures uh, that has been taken, we basically um, uh, avoided the surge that everyone was concerned about. And uh, so far, even when we're looking at the community cases, it, it looks like all the work that uh, efforts that have been put uh, forward by the community is showing its results by looking at the flattening of the curve. What the concern is the the disease is, the disease is still there the virus is still out there and is still infecting people and what we don't want is to see all that action uh, get um, um, you know reversed and uh, people getting the the same number of cases or more uh, if they lose all their guards so taking any action in that regard, I think it does require some good conversation. It does require a good risk assessment of the process. And uh, we, need to, we need to have a plan in place that how it would all unfold, how we will take those steps in the right way to prevent any major uh, uh, disaster in the community, let's put it this way. Um, and uh, so I think Having a conversation is not a bad thing because it does give uh, food for thought. It gives people to think, and it also provides uh, uh, a good sense of what should be in place before that happens. So I think I'm looking forward to that uh, conversation and uh, uh, hoping that uh, you know the the provincial government will make those decisions in the uh, keeping the uh, the interest of public health uh, first and also ensuring that uh, the economy and the, and we can get back to the normal life that we're used to. Well, I guess people hope, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, do you have a timeline in mind? Like, or better yet, is there, is there a process that you would like to see mm -hmm. moving forward? I know that, you know, mm -hmm. the province is gonna govern the way they do, but is there certain, you know, steps that you would like to see? Well, in, in an ideal situation, I think I would like to see no cases for a number of days before we, we get to uh, talk about the opening of the uh, everything. Um, but a gradual opening, I think that may not uh, be completely uh, out of the cards at this stage, uh, but we have to be careful. And I think that's where the, these conversation need. and. Um, Having a good framework to know what uh, businesses or what activities should be prioritized and then what comes later, I think that's, that's the important piece. But for me, I would like to see no cases for a number of days before we start opening, up, uh, opening things up. Any further questions from Amy Hunter? Windsor Wright? No, thanks. CBC? No, thank you. Windsor Star? No, thank you. Blackbird? No, thanks. CTV? Actually, yeah, I got uh, one here. I'm asking about the, the monitoring and the testing of migrant workers. How is that? Where is that uh, right now? So um, we, our team is working with the uh, OBGV uh, and also with the municipalities and the, um, the farm owners. To, uh, to have a good system in place for early detection of these cases and, uh, and, and sending them to for appropriate testing and treatment. Um, so that process has been working so far and uh, mass testing of these uh, workers, that's, uh, that is not at, at, this, at, at this stage we are doing, but uh, something that we are closely monitoring and uh, if needed, we will, uh, we will do that uh, depending on the situation. As you know, there then these, uh, uh, there are a number of uh, migrant farms or farms out there in the county. And um, the number of uh, workers that are there are, are also uh, pretty significant. So, so far things are working fine. Um, and we're hoping that, um, you know, it will stay that way. Thank you. All right, thank you.